Get your engines revving everybody because today we are looking at Hot Wheels Unleashed. Welcome to 128KB everybody, my name is Christina and today as I've said previously we are looking at Hot Wheels Unleashed. So I'm really excited about this one because I was a huge fan of Micro Machines. Now I don't know if you all know that game, it's quite old now, came out on the PlayStation 1 and I think loads of other different platforms as well but I played it on the PS1 and it was amazing. It was a arcade type kind of driving game with all different types of sort of man-made weird tracks with food in them and goodness knows what else it was awesome this game is so reminiscent of that it's unreal and i'm really enjoying it so far i'm gonna start with the campaign it has three main modes which are boss battles time trials and normal races so in each of these categories you normally have two challenges to complete in the races you have to either come up on the podium somewhere so third second or first and then obviously reach the first place that's usually what you get challenged to do and on the speed trials you have two speeds to actually complete with the boss rounds you don't have these two challenges it's just get through it because they are really 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 difficult but you do get some really good stuff from them so you may also see on the campaign map that there are these things called secrets they give you a tiny little hint as to unlock them and i'll talk more about these later when you complete things on the campaign you get rewards so these rewards help you to either upgrade your current cars they help you to buy other cars so you get cogs and you get money these are like in-game currencies and then and you also get blind boxes so you get blind boxes where you can get mystery cars sort of popping out and then they get added to your collection you can also get unlockables for your basement so your basement is where you kind of it's your house really it's your house and some of the tracks are actually built in your house not all of them some of them are in warehouses some of them are all over the place but there are some that are built in your house and you can change the walls, you can change the floor, you can change the furniture you, and all of this is unlockable as you play the campaign. Next we have online multiplayer and also local split screen multiplayer. This is basically just going against each other there so there isn't a lot to really talk about. You can also use your in-game currency, so the gold or the money, to buy cars in the shop menu. So the cars in the shop menu actually do have limited time offers as well, so you can purchase blind boxes or you can purchase ones you can see basically in the shop and these change every few hours so it's an incentive for you to keep playing keep playing keep playing so that you can unlock all of these in the time frame we have found though that they do roll around currently because obviously it's just come out but i think as time moves forward that lots more cars will become available and you'll want to get them really quickly before you kind of never see them again Another really cool feature that I really like is the livery editor. So there is so much that you can do here. You can add layers, you can change the colour of your wheels and your rims and your interiors and you can add decals all over your car that you can change the, the material of the paint so it can be metallic or it can look like plastic. You can make it look like a real car, you can make it look like a Hot Wheels car. So it's really, really cool, really addictive, can take so long to do. You can also upload your designs so other people can use them and you can also look at other people's designs so if you're a bit lazy and you can't be bothered to create a whole new look there are plenty that people have already made on there so make sure you check that one out there also is a level editor too i've never been one anywhere near the amount of patience that you would need <laughs> to make a level um that's why one of the reasons i never wanted to buy the mario uh level editor game whatever it was called and you'll know Mario Maker? Mario Maker, there you go. So I never wanted to purchase that because I couldn't be bothered. And to be honest, to me, it kind of feels like it's not the real game anyway, so why should I put my time and effort in to play your track? So that's just me, um, but it is there, it is available. There's lots of options there, and obviously you will have lots of 
different levels that you can play that other people have uploaded. So that's kind of cool. In terms of gameplay, so when you're actually in game, you've got drifting, it's really fast. It's your typical arcade-esque kind of driver game. You can also really feel the difference between all the different cars. So they all have different stats. You've got brake, acceleration, speed, uh, handling. You've got all these kinds of things that have a varying level of like blocks basically where you can see how good each car is in certain categories. This uh, normally in games you can't really feel very much especially if it's not something like let's say the old Forzas where it's really in depth and you can really feel the car and you can feel the handling. Most other driving games I've come across, you can't feel a massive difference if they're kind of an arcade kind of game like this is. However, I was pleasantly pleased to find out that each car, it, it really does handle differently. So if you've got a burger van compared to like a F1 car, it does handle different, which is brilliant. Um, and also it's really interesting to see the dynamics when you're on the track because there are fans and things like that. And obviously these are still toy cars. They're not actually real cars. So they do drive like toys. They drive like you've got like a, a controller and you're kind of RCing it around. It's kind of not really, it's not like a real car. And that's really cool because it really does feel a little bit like a cross between Micro Machines and Mario Kart. It feels like toys. It feels completely different to an actual car, which I really like. And there are some crazy things that can happen. So you can go upside down, you go on a magnetized track to so stop you falling off. Again, like I say, with the fans, you can get blown across, which is really infuriating, by the way. Um, <laughs> there's loads of things that can happen. You can go underneath cars because yours has kind of got a little lip and theirs has kind of like got room underneath and you kind of end up robot wars in them off the side. It's really cool. It's really, really fun. I really can't explain how fun it is. You do just have to give it a go. If you have a temper, this game probably will make you smash your new Switch OLED because it is infuriating the things that happen to you. It's a bit like if Call of Duty became a driving game. It's that level of hate my life, frustration. <laughs> it is so hard sometimes. There are levels with like spiders in that spit these like webs at you on the floor and you think, oh yeah, I've got this. I've done this like eight times. You're on a, tr you're on a time trial. You've gone round about 50 times and every time you hit that spider web and it stops you dead in your track and you've lost five seconds and you would have done the best time of your life. But for the fifth time in the row, you have hit a freaking spider web. There's also these things that come later on in the game with like, spoilers alert, these scorpions where they shoot this venom at you and you hit it and you can't boost. And it's really annoying. It's so annoying. And it's infuriating to me, really it is. But the good thing is, is you don't have to play it like me and Andy do, where we try and complete everything before we move on. So like I said earlier, there are usually two challenges with most of the activities, apart from like boss battles. Um, and basically, we try and complete all of that before moving on, which can mean you are there for hours and hours learning the track, learning when to drift, perfecting your driving skills to get past, to get the quickest time. So just be warned, it is one of those games that's addictive and equally frustrating. Other than being frustrated out of my mind and debating whether, you know, I should put this game down permanently <laughs> or not because it's not good for my mental state. Um, other than that, there are things that really did gripe me. So things that shouldn't have happened like glitches, there aren't that many, luckily, so there are a few. Basically, one of the main ones was when we were kind of driving along and suddenly you would hit nothing. You would hit nothing and you would kind of fly up in the air as if you were a spaceship taking off for Apollo 9. And that, I know, I know it sounds like it's a small thing and it only happened rarely, but when you have done the, the you, you saw how frustrated I was. When you've done the round about eight times to get your best time, or you've you, you, this race about eight times to get through to first, it tips you over the edge. It really tips you over the edge. The other thing that we got was uh, the respawn button. 
so if you crash or you fall off of the uh, track or whatever and you can't get back on, you can press and hold the X button and that will respawn you and it will put you back on the track and usually it puts you, say you were first, it will put you back like a few spaces because people have caught up with you by then. So you can press and hold it and it will just spawn you back on the track and you carry on. Great, fine, but sometimes you panic and you go, ah, respawn, and then you go, oh, I've sorted myself out, don't worry about it. And if you do that and you slightly press that X button for respawn, it can stay there for the entire rest of the race. So you are looking at this little X right in the middle of your screen where you're trying to concentrate, you're trying to avoid obstacles, you're trying to overtake everybody, and you've got an X button right in the middle of your screen and you can't get rid of it and it says respawn. So sometimes it's just worth taking the hit and just respawning because depending on where you are in the rounds, it's just really annoying. It's just absolutely infuriating. So uh, on top of all of the normal stress of this game, <laughs> there's also those glitches, so do be aware. The other thing that I found was really frustrating as well is the secrets. So the secrets are, like I mentioned earlier, things that you kind of unlock by doing certain things in a certain order or using certain vehicles or whatever the case may be. However, the hints are a bit rubbish. They don't really give you any idea as to what you do. Like one of them will say, with a special guest appearance from ZX and Y name of car. And what does that mean? Do I need to, how can I select the car and play the secret? Because you can't, you can't do that until you've actually pressed on the actual event that you're going to do or whatever. And it's you. It's just really uninformative. So I've, I've, I don't cheat generally. Um, and I quite, I quite hate doing it, to be honest. I find that it, I'd rather sit there and work it out. Um, but there was no way of knowing. So I had to Google how to unlock these secrets. And honestly, unless you've literally spent hours and days and days looking at, you know, I wonder if I do this. Nope, that didn't work. I wonder if I do that, uh, you know, so on and so forth. It just takes so long. And it would be really nice if they just, you know, gave you a bit more information. But I guess then it wouldn't be a secret. So I'll leave that up to you, whether that's a gripe or not. But putting all of that aside, I really can't stress just how good this game looks on the new Switch OLED. Honestly, the colors are so bright, they are so good. And especially compared to like any other Switch or you know anything else that you've got laying around or even on your TV, if you haven't got a great TV, the Switch OLED will blow it out of the water. Um, the game itself is fabulous. The controls are really kind of intuitive. There's only really three buttons. So you've got accelerator, brake and drift. And um, no, sorry, brake and drift are the same. Accelerate, brake and drift. And then you've also got boost. So there's really only three buttons. Um, and one of the buttons kind of does both things there. So it's really easy to kind of pick up and just play. There are different levels of difficulty. So if you do get extremely really hacked off with a specific um, level or challenge, you can actually change it and kind of do that one on an easier one and then put it back up. But um, we didn't do that. But we didn't do that. We haven't done that. That's hence why we hate our lives because we have literally grinded through uh, quite a lot of the game. I think we're like 30, 40% of the way through the game last time I checked. Um, so, you know, there is that option there, but playing the game itself is brilliant. It's so much fun. It will be so much fun to play with your friends and your family. And it's one of those games where you can jump in and jump out. You don't need to really remember what's gone on or there's no real storyline or anything. It's just race, get to the end as quick as you can or first. Um, and that's really, really good. I think that those types of games are exactly what I would personally want from the Switch. I like my fun games on the Switch, like Wario and stuff like that. That's that's what I like Nintendo for. And this has definitely achieved that. I also think it's really, really cool. The other thing I must mention is how there is associations with types of brands and different types of like Batman and then you've got like actual car brands and stuff like that. I mean, how cool is that? You've got Hot Wheels and then you've got Batman or you've got like Mercedes or whatever, you know, like that's cool. I really like the fact that you, you've got that option and obviously you have got the subscription based kind of 
season pass where you can kind of get the season pass and then get everything so you can claim all of the new cars coming out and everything but if you haven't got $24.99 to kind of get that pass then you can also buy things individually which I would do personally because they've got like they've got this Barbie camper van and I don't know what it looks like yet but I really want it yeah you know there's stuff like that so there'll be ones that tickle your fancy more than others and I think you know for £1.69 or whatever I'm kind of a microtransaction kind of person because I don't really notice it as much as going like, yeah, whack it on $24.99. That's probably what they want you to do. Um, but you know, it's one of those things you don't have, it's not uh, pay to win. So you're not gonna get any extra like, you know, amazing, you know, killer cars or anything. From what I've gathered, it's just that they're normal-ish cars um, and they're just different types of design. So that's really cool as well. So overall, this game is a must buy, probably the best game I've played in goodness knows how long. Andy agrees with me, don't you Andy? Yeah, it's amazing. We love it. We literally are addicted to it and it's like a love-hate relationship, but it's brilliant. Again, like Call of Duty. If you've played Call of Duty, you know exactly the feeling I'm trying to describe. <laughs> it's that love-hate, like you can't help but play it, but it frustrates the hell out of you. So, you know, it's one of those things, but it is definitely worth buying, it's definitely worth getting, and if you haven't played it yet, then please do it. Make sure as well, by the way, that you check out all our other videos for our Switch OLED. We've got so many with Andy and myself, and if you are not sure about buying one, or you wanna see certain bits or certain features, we've covered it all, and we've gone as far as we can with everything, and we've given you our honest opinion. We, we are in no way endorsed or anything like that, so check them out and see what you think there. And if you wanna troll us, go for it. We love it. We, we absolutely love the attention. I think Fallout Boy once said, I don't care what you think, as long as you think about me. So that's 128KV. I'm Christina. I hope you've enjoyed this video today. Get yourselves Hot Wheels Unleashed and I will see you next time. <laughs> Rev your engines guys because we're looking at Micro Machines Unleashed.